Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and another watercolour tutorial. Now as you probably know, there are a huge range of exciting options when it comes to buying watercolour paint, and it can be very tempting and convenient to want to try them all out. But that can get very expensive and often it isn't necessary. So in today's video I'm going to talk to you a bit about colour theory and using the colour wheel, and show you how I mix all the colours I need for this realistic green snake painting using just the three primary colours, red, yellow and blue. I hope by the end of the video you feel confident to try mixing your own colours and feel reassured that you don't need to have a huge collection of colours to be a good artist. In fact, the more you know about colour theory and colour mixing, the less paint you will actually need. So for my watercolours today I'll be using Cadmium Yellow Light by Schmincke, Winsor & Newton's Windsor Blue from their professional range and Daniel Smith's Quinacridone Rose. And I'll list them all down in the description box if you're interested, along with a reference photo from Pixabay. You don't have to have exactly the same colours as me, but if you can, try and choose primary colours that contain just one pigment, as it will make for easier and cleaner mixing later on. Now before we start mixing our watercolours, let's just have a quick look at the colour wheel. These are really useful and cheap to buy, or you can even make your own. On it you can see the three primary colours, red, yellow and blue, and as you probably know, mixing two primary colours together will give you the secondary colours. So blue and yellow make green, red and blue make violet, and red and yellow make orange. And mixing a primary colour together with a secondary colour will give you the tertiary colours. I'm mainly going to be mixing greens today for my snake painting, but I'll also need to mix black for the eye and maybe some brown too. So I'm going to start by mixing a few different greens, starting with the lightest green I can see on the reference photo. I mix more yellow than blue to begin with, and gradually add more blue to achieve a brighter green hue. We can lighten each of these colours just by diluting them with water. I add more blue again to mix a third green. These greens are all really bright, and just right for the bright green skin of the snake. But if you find your greens look more olive green or muddy, then double check which pigments are in your blue watercolour, as sometimes red pigments are added and these can be identified by a PR before the number. This can give a really lovely purple undertone to the blue watercolour, as red and blue make purple. But when you mix two colours that are opposite each other on the colour wheel, such as purple and yellow, the two colours neutralise each other out and you can end up with a muddy brown colour, and not quite the luminous bright green you are after. So here's where understanding a bit about colour theory can really ease some of that frustration and help you to mix the colours you want. There are other things to consider when colour mixing, like whether you are mixing cool or warm versions of a colour together, but for now let's stick to the basics. Often whether you are a beginner or more advanced, the best way to learn and to see if something works or not is to try it out, so I would suggest experimenting with the colours you have on your palette, on a scrap piece of paper or in a sketchbook and seeing what you come up with. Now before I mix any more colours, I want to talk a bit about the methods and techniques I'm using to paint the snake. I began by pre-wetting the whole of the snake's head with clean water, so I could apply a light layer of yellow-green. But I was careful to keep the brightest highlight areas free of paint. And whilst that was still damp, I then started to drop in some of my other green mixes, so the colours could blend together on the surface of the paper. I used my reference photo as a guide, and tried to focus more on the overall colour variations I could see at this stage, rather than worrying about any of the smaller details. With the first light layer on the head done, I moved on to painting the darker part of the snake's body in the background. For this, I simply mixed more blue into my yellow. This gave me a really nice blue-green, 
but I thought it needed toning down a bit. Going back to the colour wheel, the opposite or complementary colour of green is red. So by adding just a tiny bit of red to this mixture, I was able to make what I thought was a more natural green colour. As before, I pre-wet this area of the snake's body first with clean water before painting on some of the bright sap green colour I'd mixed already. I added some yellow too, and then whilst the paper was still damp, I painted on some of the more muted green mix into the darker shadow areas and use some of the lighter greens to paint the rest of the snake's body. That's dry now, but before I start to paint the next layer of watercolour, I want to mix up a neutral brown colour to glaze over parts of the skin, and a black for the snake's eye. Like I said before, you can create neutral or brown tones simply by mixing two complementary or opposite colours on the colour wheel. So you can try mixing blue and orange, red and green, or yellow and violet, and you'll get different results depending on what watercolour pigments you're using, so it's worth trying these combinations out for yourself. I'm going to use orange and blue, so first start by making an orange with my yellow and quinacridone rose. Then I add in some blue. This resulting mix looks quite green, so I could always add more red to neutralise it and make more of a brown tone, but it'll do for now. Next I'm going to mix black, and black can be made by mixing all three of the primary colours together. You can adjust it to be a cooler black by adding more blue, or a warmer black by adding more red, so have a play around with it. One thing I would say though is that mixing black is a lot easier if you are using watercolours straight out of the tube, as the pigment is nice and thick and more concentrated. If you are trying to mix a rich dark black from watercolours in pans, then make sure you only add enough water to reactivate your watercolours. Adding too much water will dilute your paint mix and you'll end up with more of a grey colour than a black. So now I can start to paint the next layer on the snake's head. This time though I paint one scale at a time, as there is quite a lot of variation in the different greens I can see here. I start on the front of the head with some of the lighter, brighter greens. and then glaze over a light wash of the brownie green colour on the top here. I also add some of that at the back here too. I'm mixing up a much darker green now, and whilst you can easily lighten watercolour just by adding more water, you can darken colours simply by adding more pigment. So I'm using less water and more pigment here to mix my blue and yellow together. I add in a small amount of the quinacridone rose too, for a more muted natural looking dark green. I paint this on two wet paper so I get nice soft paint edges and drop in some of the black I mixed earlier onto the damp paper too, as the shadow here is really dark. I use this same dark green mix to paint the dark shadow between the top and bottom jaw, this time painting onto dry paper with a smaller round brush. Next for the nostril I use a darker brown, and this I mixed using the same orange and blue as before, but this time used more pigment and less water.
Depending on what colours I could see from the reference photo, I also used either the dark brown or the dark green paint to mark out the shadows between each of the scales which really helped to add contrast and make this painting pop. Painting these darker values in though meant that I needed to adjust some of the other values in the painting. So I went back over some of the scales with further layers of watercolour until I was happy with the result. Now I'm going to paint the eye. This is the black watercolour I mixed up earlier. And I paint onto dry paper to keep it nice and dark and give me more control over where the paint goes. I didn't use any masking fluid to preserve the white highlight, so I have to paint carefully around it. For the green here, I used some of the leftover brownie olive green on my palette. Now there's just one more thing I want to do and that's darken up under the body. I've painted quite a lot of detail on the snake's head as this is the focal point of the painting and I deliberately kept the snake's body quite loose to push it back and give the painting depth. But I think I need to go darker. And instead of using black here, I mixed up more of a blue-green and applied it like a glaze onto the dry paper softening out any edges with a clean damp brush. And here it is finished. I hope you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up if you did and consider subscribing if you're watching my channel for the first time. Thank you so much for watching, take care, enjoy the rest of your week and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!